Well, companies turn to China for inexpensive and efficient production of goods. But lately, Foxconn, one company, has been a manufacturing drama. The company behind many Apple products has struggled to deal with worker suicides, employee protests, and rising wage demands. Bloomberg Businessweek's editor Josh Tierengel has been working on a story about Foxconn's changing strategies, and he joins us now with some inside details. Good to have you with us, Josh. Great to so see you. what have you been learning about Foxconn? This is the company, as we were just talking, that had put up nets outside the company's building so that if and when a worker decides to jump, they land in a net. And this is a very big deal to Foxconn, obviously. I mean, this is a huge company. It has 920,000 employees. It has one campus with over 300,000 employees, a 2.1 square kilometer campus. And Foxconn has been a very quiet company intentionally. So Terry Goh, the founder, started the company as a manufacturing company. And they, they actually began by making the dials on black and white television sets, the knobs with which you would turn the channel. And so very quietly, he developed relationships with American businessmen, uh, moved into computers, moved into the connectors, and all the while understood that his value to these companies was in being a quiet manufacturer. Um, as the company grew, uh, got into bed with Apple, obviously, produced the iPhone and now the iPad. And so Foxconn itself has become a story. And the way that most of the world found out about Foxconn's existence was through these suicides. So there is no worse way in business for you to make news and become part of the consciousness than through something as tragic as this. And now we're visiting the company at a moment where it is completely in a transition. Um, Gao, who is a brilliant, brilliant businessman um, and a great salesman, has got to figure out what is the story he's telling to the world? And they've chosen, I'm very grateful to tell the story. Uh, You've got us. an exclusive on this. We do have an exclusive with him. We have a great look at inside the company. We have great conversations with actual workers there, unsupervised conversations, so we really get a sense of what life is like when you work on an assembly line producing high-end consumer electronics for the West at really incredible speed. Um, so the story is very textured, very interesting, and, and you know we still have a little bit of work to do on it before the magazine comes out. But you'll be, you'll be up late tonight, in other words. We will be up late tonight, but it's Tuesday, and you'll join us. You'll come, I know, and help out. Absolutely. I'll be, I'll be serving you coffee to keep you awake. That would be great. What keeps go and Foxconn up. What is their future strategy? I mean, let's if we can just put the suicides sure. and then the employee stuff aside for a moment. What's their future plan? Well, in, to, to speak about the present for a moment, Go, who is um, stationed in Taipei, has come to Shenzhen to really, for the, since May, has been living there, trying to fix the problem, trying to figure out whether it's a morale issue, whether it's a sociology issue. I mean, you have a lot of young people living together in close quarters. They're incredibly vulnerable emotionally. So they're trying to figure out the nature of the suicide Suicides, what's behind them and trying to solve it immediately. In the long term, you know, Fox Hunt is a company that has to provide a whole lot for its employees. Many times these are people who are coming from um, backgrounds where they don't have a tremendous amount of education. They're stationing these factories in places that don't have a tremendous amount of support. And the overhead to create dormitories, kitchens, cafeterias. Now they actually have places where they have chickens, thousands and thousands of chickens to lay eggs for their cafeterias. He's nation building in a way. And what he well, 900, really, you said 920,000 employees. Yeah, and just for scale, HP has 300,000. So he, what he's trying to do is get out of the business of being a nation state, look further inland and try and get local governments within China to actually build the infrastructure, and he promises the jobs. So this company is advancing in, in, in just leaps and bounds, but he has a very clear vision for what he wants the next five years to be. Is it manageable at that size? I mean, 920,000 employees right now, I got to think that that means they're going to be adding employees in the future. They are going to be adding employees. They're building a $1 billion plant specifically to produce HP products. Um, Can something... anybody else in the world do that? I mean, building a $1 billion factory for, for, to produce HP products? No. I mean, if they could, there would be real competition for Foxconn. And what he knows is that he's got to stay ahead of the game. Now, the, the secret to this is the margin. What Go can do... He's in the parts business. You can get it a la carte. If you want your iPhone and you want him to make it and you ship in the parts, he'll do it for you. But if you want him to make the parts, deliver the parts, manufacture the device with the parts he made, they can, so, they can hit such a low margin on the actual manufacturing because they're making their money on the parts. It's really difficult to compete with Foxconn. So they've got a lock on the business, it seems, right now. 
whenever you say somebody's got a lock on the business, that's the moment maybe you know, some, maybe don't someone have a lock is, on the business. But it's very difficult to see where someone else can come in and improve on his margins. Have any of the U.S. companies that are his customers come back to Foxconn and said that unless you change something about the way the company operates, having to do with employee satisfaction, suicides, morale, pay, that we're going to change maybe the way we do business with you? So Apple, rather famously after this broke in May, um, went in and looked at the practices and found there's a report on the Apple website that found a couple of violations of the code of conduct that Apple works with. And Go has been very solicitous of outside companies' opinions on his worker practices, trying to make sure that they are up to speed. What's really interesting in the reporting process is that, you know, for China, the standard of, of uh, work atmosphere within Foxconn is pretty good. Um, which lets, you know, it's, it's a little bit chilling in a way to know that what's expected of workers in China is, is rather dramatic. Um, at the same time, it's not that different to what happened on the American assembly line, you know, less than 100 years ago. Uh, this is the cost of capitalism, and this is the way you get your foot on the ladder and just start rising up. When you talk about the cost of capitalism, what about wages? We've seen, for example, in the past some strikes in China, Honda plant. Are wages rising? Is that also something they have to deal with? So part of the amazing thing about China at this moment is that, um, you know, we used to think of it as a very sort of hermetic society. Well, these are people producing consumer electronics. They have cell phones. They have the web. They know what's going on outside of China, and they're able to exert a different kind of pressure on the companies. Now, Foxconn specifically uses very young workers, 18 to 25 for the most part, and they know what's going on. So they are able to press for increased wages, better standard of living. All right. Well, we know what's going on because we get to talk to you. Josh Tierengel, editor of Bloomberg Business Week.